Bedini motors are great. At least I think they are. They've got to be one of the simplest free energy devices that you can build. Great for beginners, even if you don't know anything about electronics. They, you're going to learn through building this Bedini motor. It was invented about 20 years ago, just over, I think, um, by John Bedini, although it uses several other scientists' theories, including the cold Tesla and EV Gray. You might have heard of his EV Gray motor. Also very interesting, but um, Bedini motor is much more simple. In essence, all the Bedini motor actually is is a pulse DC motor. All the magnets on the rotor are north poles facing out, so we could also call it a monopole motor. Uh, you can put the south poles facing out, although a lot of people have found that it doesn't work quite as well with the north pole. As I said, it's basically a pulse DC motor. Uh, you could do a similar kind of thing using a reed switch. A reed switch is basically a kind of switch that only turns on in the presence of a magnetic field. Um, and that would turn the coil on at the right time, but with the problem with the reed switch is um, it's hard to get it in just the right position to get the most efficiency out of the motor, and they burn out very fast. You could use a bridge rectifier, but even then they're going to burn out eventually. And also, compared to a Bedini circuit, I can't get nearly as much power at, uh, with a reed switch as I can with a Bedini circuit. So, um, yeah, Bedini circuit, very good. The original school goal motor was very simple. It um, only had one battery. It was a regular 9-volt battery, like you put in the back of um, any kind of RT car uh, remote control. Not much power, not rechargeable, basically all it was in that form was a very very efficient motor. But uh, we can get over unity out of it, but to do that we need to make the uh, circuit a little bit more complex. Basically we have to add a second battery and give it a bit more juice. We're going to use uh, 12 volt batteries, uh, 12 volt lead acid batteries, the rechargeable kind that you uh, put in your car to start the engine, run the lights etc. And they're also the most expensive part of the motor, although you can probably find them second hand cheap enough. We're not too interested in the amount of energy that we can get out of the motor itself, that's the rotor part of it. Um, we're more interested in the energy that's actually going into the batteries. But um, when calculating the efficiency of the motor, uh, how much power you actually get out of it, you have to look at both the batteries and the motor parts. You have to take that kinetic energy into account. But we don't need to worry about that too much because uh, more than likely, you are going to get at least unity between the primary battery and the charging battery. And anything extra that you get out of the wheel is um, an added bonus. Okay, so you know the basics. Uh, let's have a look at one and actually see how it works. So for that we'll have to go to my secret underground laboratory. Off we go. I do have a Bedini motor. There we go. Now, you might have seen this on one of my other videos. It's a little different now. In that, it has now got two electromagnets. And the wheel is a bit smaller. And I've added an extra pair of magnets, and so now it's got eight magnets on the rotor. Now the second coil you don't have to worry about so much, we're just going to have a look at the first coil, there we go. Right, well we're going to ignore the second coil now, so now it's just a one coil. The Bini motor. And unfortunately it's not working at the moment because I have fried the circuit. Uh, short circuit cables, but um, I'm just going to use this to show you what happens. Now you can see the magnets, one there, one there, one there, going all the way around the rotor. And of course this is the electromagnet, which has got two coils wrapped around the core. Uh, one coil is the fatter coil, and that's the power coil, the one that actually um, forms the magnetic field. And the other one is a trigger coil, which is a slightly thinner cable, and that's going around parallel with the, um, with the power coil. So what happens is, when this wheel is spinning, <coughs> we'll be doing a slow motion, and just keep an eye on that magnet there. As this magnet comes over the core, it triggers the current in the trigger coil, and that flows through into the collector of the transistor in the circuit, which I'll show you later. And when the uh, transistor has a current flowing from the trigger coil, it then turns on the power coil of this electromagnet, and it pushes that magnet away, and then the next magnet comes in and starts all over again. So bang, 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 bang. 
day. And yeah, if it looks something like that, of course it's not firing at the minute. So <coughs> that's why I call it a pulse DC motor. It's only when the magnet is going over the core, um, a current is being made in the trigger coil. So it's being turned on and off, on and off, on and off. Uh, pulsing DC current basically into the power coil and keeping this wheel spinning. <coughs>